Hey guys, in this video I'll be comparing the most popular dividend ETFs in Australia. Six funds dominate the market, and in this video I'll introduce you to each and every single one of them. By the end of this video, you'll know the six dominant funds in the market and be empowered with the information you need to pick the best fund for your investing goals. If you're investing around the world, you'll notice that Australia and New Zealand have stalled on the capital gain side of things recently. While the S&P 500 is up over 5% year to date, and 20% over the past year, Australia's leading index the ASX 200 and New Zealand's NZX 50 are down 0.29 and 0.77 percent respectively. Not a great look. Fortunately while the stock prices have remained still dividends over this part of the world remain among the world's highest. Using data from Bloomberg Australia came out on top with average dividends more than double that of the United States. Simplest Research performed a similar analysis in 2002 again with Australia coming out on top. So this is a great part of the world to be dividend investing. If you're new to my channel I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Make sure to subscribe down below to see all of my future content. Now let's get into it. Kicking off we have the iShares S&P ASX Dividend Opportunities ESG Screened ETF. Quite a mouthful. This fund is provided by iShares which is the ETF arm of the world's largest asset manager. BlackRock. This ETF trades under the ticker IHD and it has been trading since 2010. With 53 stock holdings this ETF uniquely targets high dividend Australian companies that meet strict ESG and revenue screening rules. This fund is strongly skewed towards two industries being financials such as banks and materials as in mining. BHP and Rio Tinto top the list followed by Australia's big four banks a bit of Telstra and QBE insurance. These are strong valuable companies that pay regular and reliable dividends. Today the fund holds about $310 million under management, which for perspective is roughly one and a half times the size of the total New Zealand stock market, so it's pretty big. iShares also charge one of the lowest management fees in this list at just over 0.23% per year. Over the past year the dividend yield has been around 5.8%, the second highest in this list, and it even made capital gains of 2% putting its trailing one year return at 7.82%. Looking at the five year returns the average return was 8.05%. These returns put it near the top of this list for historical returns. We must remember however that just because a fund has performed well historically it doesn't mean it's guaranteed to outperform in future years. So just take these returns with a grain of salt. And finally dividends are paid quarterly while the fund rebalances its holdings twice a year. The second fund we'll be looking at is the Russell High Dividend Australian Shares ETF. Russell Investments is an investment management and advisory company based out of Seattle over in the United States. This ETF trades under the ticker RDV and it too has been trading since 2010. With 49 stock holdings this ETF tracks the Russell Australia High Dividend Index which invests in Australian listed stock that is expected to make high dividend payments. As compared to the iShares fund we just looked at this Russell fund has a much stronger concentration in financial stocks with 7 out of its 10 largest holdings. That is followed by a distant materials and energy sector weighting. Today the fund has an impressive $247 million under management and charges a management fee of 0.34% which is on the higher end of this list. Over the past year RDV has paid a dividend yield of 4.75% but made negative capital gains of 1.56% putting its net one year return at 3.19%. Lands around the middle of the pack. Over the past five years, its returns have averaged out to 6.71% a year. Dividends are also paid quarterly, and the fund rebalances its holdings twice a year. It also has franking credits of 86%, which is useful for domestic investors to reduce their dividend tax obligations. Trading under the ticker SYI, the SPDR MSCI. Australia Select High Dividend Yield Fund is an ETF listed by State Street Corporation. They are a Boston based investment advisory firm with a lengthy history on Wall Street. The fund has 60 stock holdings and targets Australian companies that have strong and reliable dividends. It does this by seeking companies with diverse operations, reliable recurring revenue and a history of paying dividends with franking credits. Much like the two funds that we've already looked at, this fund also has strong portfolio concentration in the materials and financial sectors which combined make up over 50% of this fund. Within the top 10 holdings we can see similar names such as Combank and Rio Tinto but also new names such as West Farmers, Coles and Macquarie. The fund has amassed deposits of about $440 million making it the second largest fund in the list. 
and they also charge a super low 0.2% management fee, making it the cheapest in this list. Over the past year, SYI has paid a dividend yield of 4.71%. However, it has had a shocker of a year on the capital gain side of things. There, it lost 4.24%. This gave the fund a net return of just 0.47% over the past year. If instead we looked at the past five years, however, the average return was 7.96% per year, which is above average in the list. So while they had a poor 2023, prior years performed more favorably for them. As with the other funds we've looked at, dividends are paid quarterly, the fund is rebalanced twice a year, and during the rebalancing, any individual holding must be less than or equal to 10% of the fund. This maintains a good balance of diversification in the fund. Next up is the Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETF, which is another big hitter on this list. While BlackRock we covered earlier is the largest asset manager in the world, Vanguard slips into second place with over $7 trillion under management. Trading under the ticker VHY, this fund has been around since 2011. The fund has 72 stock holdings, which is relatively high for this list. And as with most funds on this list, Vanguard targets Australian companies that have higher than average dividends. Vanguard touts this fund as being perfect for buy and hold investors seeking long-term capital growth as well as tax effective income and a relative immunity to market volatility. To ensure sufficient diversification, they set a cap of 40% on any one sector and 10% on any one company. Financials make up the lion's share of this fund, much like our earlier Russell fund hitting the 40% cap. This was followed by the materials and energy sectors. The top 10 holdings have all the same names as other funds we've looked at, such as the four large banks, Rio Tinto and BHP, as well as other smaller names in this list. What really separates this fund from the others is just how dominant it is. This ETF has nearly $3.5 billion invested in it, making it the largest in this list by quite some margin. Given the reputation of Vanguard in the market, it's no surprise people trust having their money invested with them. The fund also has a relatively low management fee of just 0.25%. Over the past year, VHY has paid a dividend yield of 4.74% and a slight gain on the capital gain side of 0.44%. This gave the fund a net return of 5.18% for the trailing one year. Over the past five years, this fund blew others out of the water with an average return of 10.98% per year. Like the others, dividends are paid quarterly on this fund. The fifth fund in this list is the Global X S&P ASX 300 High Yield Plus ETF. Sometimes you have to wonder why they make the names of these funds so long. Global X is a baby when compared to other giants in this list, having just under $50 billion under management, while others sit well into the trillions. It is based in New York and was an early adopter of thematic ETF funds giving investors access to unique and exciting funds. This fund trades under the ticker ZYAU and has been trading since 2013. The fund has 50 holdings and targets Australian companies with high forecasted dividend payouts. A little over 65% of the fund is invested in the financials and materials sector, with, once again, financials being the largest share of this. Among the top 10 holdings are the same names we've seen in the other funds, just with different weightings. Just like Vanguard and State Street funds, this one also has a cap of 10% in any one company. This fund is the smallest in this list, with just $65 million under management. They also charge an annual management fee of 0.24%, which again is among the smallest in this list. Like the other funds that we've looked at, this fund pays its dividends quarterly, though it has a relatively low franking level of just 48%. Over the past year, this fund has paid the highest dividend yield of 6.72% though it made negative capital gains of 3.67%. This gave the fund a net return of 3.05%, which is on the lower end of this list. Looking at the five-year returns, the fund has significantly underperformed others in this list. It had a negative return of just 0.65% a year, with the annual capital losses pretty much wiping out the dividend returns year after year. What's interesting with these dividend funds, despite investing in similar companies, is the variance in their five-year price movements. If we look at the Vanguard fund, it's up over 20%. State Street's fund is about level, while this Global X fund has dropped by about as much as Vanguard's went up. This shows just how important the weighting of stock holdings is, as these funds invest in mainly the same stocks. And finally, we have our sixth Australian dividend ETF, trading under the ticker DVDY, the Vanek Morningstar Australian Moat Income ETF. Vanek is an American investment and mutual fund advisory company headquartered in New York. When they decided to venture into Australian ETFs in 2020, 
they decided to partner with Morningstar, which is a trusted equity research name in the local market. This fund is the most concentrated in our list, with just 25 stock holdings, targeting high quality Australian stocks with dependable dividends. Uniquely, the stocks must also pass Morningstar's rigorous equity research process in order to make the cut for this fund. Morningstar is widely respected in Australia and New Zealand for their equity research, so this gives the fund a different flavour from the others in this list. Financials once again make up the lion's share of the fund, but uniquely it has significantly reduced holdings in the materials sector, with a stronger preference for industrials, consumer discretionary and communication stocks. The stock holdings are very different to those that we've seen in other funds. There are familiar names like Combank and West Farmers, but you have others like CarSales.com, Pinnacle Investments and Brambles, which didn't really feature in the other funds. Even though this fund is relatively new, only having started trading in 2020, it has amassed $76 million under management. Its management fee, however, is a wee bit high, sitting at 0.35%, which is nearly double that of some of the other funds, such as State Street. The fund pays its dividends out quarterly, it rebalances twice a year, and it has a franking level of 79%. Over the past year, the fund has returned a dividend yield of 4.23%. And with negative gains of 1.17%, the net return was 3.06%. The fund hasn't traded for the past five years, but using the index as a reference, the fund would have returned something close to 8.9% per year. Now that the funds have been introduced, let's compare them side by side. If we look at the age of the funds, iShares, Russell and State Street are the oldest, having been founded in 2010. Vanguard followed the year after, and GlobalX joined the year after that in 2012. Newest on the market is Vanek in 2020. The largest fund by far is Vanguard with over $3 billion invested. State Street follows with $400 million invested, and iShares and Russell follow closely too. On the fee side, State Street leads the pack, charging just 0.2% per year iShares, Vanguard and GlobalX aren't far behind, while Russell and Vanek charge a premium hanging around 35 basis points. On the stock holdings, Vanek is the least diversified with just 25 stock holdings, while Vanguard has the most with 72. With the exception of Vanek, the other five funds are broadly the same with strong financials and materials exposure. All the funds we've looked at offer dividends quarterly rebalance quarterly, while the franking levels varied widely. According to ShareSight, a great website for tracking your portfolio, GlobalX had the highest dividend yield on a trailing 12-month basis at 6.72%. iShares followed at 5.8%. Looking at the net returns, iShares leads the list with a return of 7.82%, trailed by Vanguard at 5.18%. Over a five-year period, Vanguard is the clear winner, with net returns per annum in excess of 10%. State Street and iShares followed with around 8% returns a piece. If you need help managing your stock portfolio, do make sure to check out ShareSite, which can easily track all of your stock and fund investments around the world, and even in different currencies. They have offered my subscribers four months free on their annual plan, so make sure you check them out. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance investing space. Thanks for watching, I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.